What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is April 24th of 2018. Well, folks, it's time for a daily update here on the Data Dash channel. And today we have a lot of important things to discuss here on the daily update. First and foremost, as always, though, we'll be spending some time looking at market valuations as well as doing some technical analysis on the market leaders. But outside of that as well, guys, we have some really key announcements to make at the beginning of the video as well as some key headlines to go through in regards to the geopolitical sense of adoption or lack thereof for Bitcoin in countries like India and Iran. So we've got a lot of things to discuss in regards to the daily update. Let's not push it off any longer and dive right into it. So starting off with a real quick reminder, guys, I've got two events coming up here, one in Boston where I'm going to be speaking on a media panel. If you guys can come to it, it's on April 27th. I've got the information down below in the description, as well as the Beach Blockchain Conference, which I've registered for in the Philippines. It's going to be in mid-May. If you guys can make it out, love to see you there. Either way, if you guys can't make it, I'll be sure to attend multiple future conferences, hopefully in your area. So, Let's go ahead and talk about the daily update and spend some time to discuss the current stance on markets, guys. I don't think you need me to tell you that markets have been absolutely exuberant over the past week, guys. There is no better word to describe it. We have seen absolute optimism across the board. Every single cryptocurrency seems to be making new relative highs for the past few weeks and months. It seems like the optimism has come back in the cryptocurrency space after a three to four month bear market. So what's driving all this? A lot of people have been asking me personally, you know, Nick, you know, what's the key indicator? Is there anything behind the scenes that you know about uh, that maybe some technical indicator, some fundamental indicator? Folks, look, I don't usually give my insider perspective on this. I kind of keep it quiet, but I thought I might as well go ahead and share with you all today on the sense of my integrity, what's really going on behind the scenes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are embarking on what's known as a Chad trend. Now, I, bear with me for a moment because I think many people don't know the power of the Chad trend or what a Chad trend really is. Folks, a Chad trend cannot be stopped until the Chad trend decides it wants to be stopped. This means new paradigms every single week. Uh, we are blowing up to new highs when it comes to Chad trends. Chad is the envisionment of the alpha. He is the envisionment of someone who cannot be stopped until he wants to be stopped. And the spirit of Chad has returned to Bitcoin. It has returned to the ultimatum that Bitcoin cannot be stopped. So, guys, I'm going to tell you, for example, a few days ago, I was saying that Bitcoin uh, needed to, you know, was going to experience some resistance at 9,000 and go down to 8,000. No, I'm so sorry. I, I doubted that it was happening, but the symptoms are too clear, guys. It's the Chad trend. We're in a Chad trend right now. There's no denying it. Bitcoin to, to $5 million next week. Okay, no, I'm just kidding, guys. Anyways, as we're as we're joking here, it's become obviously clear that uh, we are experiencing something. We are experiencing something along the lines of a Chad trend because this market has been taking absolute positivity to an extreme. And we take a look over the past 24 hours here, guys. H share, Ethos, KuCoin shares, all up double digits in the 20% range. And we even go down, we can start to see some billion dollar cryptocurrencies up on the lead here. Tron almost up 20%, EOS almost up 20%, Ken, Wanchain, Kyber Network, so many different players doing extremely well across the board and seeing high levels of volume. So this is really, really exciting stuff, guys. It's showing that we might be on the serious verge of, uh, I think, a bull run, that we, the likes we haven't seen since December. So it's going to be really, really exciting stuff here, guys. As we take a look across the board, to really put this in perspective, not only have we come up from around the $250 billion range that we found support at all the way up to $425 billion, but just over the past 24 hours alone in total market capitalization, have we gained $25 billion in market valuation. One singular day. And that trend has been continuing over the past seven days. We've gone from around a valuation of $331 billion all the way up to $426 billion. This is fantastic for crypto markets, especially after being in the red for the, next, the past three to four months. And we're also seeing a return of volume, which is healthy, up to $30 billion of volume over the past 24 hours. Really good to see that. And again, this is not just being uh, reflected in Bitcoin. It's happening across the market, and it's actually even showing better in altcoins. Going back to dominance, again, guys, we see across the market that people are taking more and more risk, that Bitcoin dominance is making new and newer lows as we go down, uh, sorry, as we rise in the market. 
As Bitcoin continues to gain, other coins and other market leaders such as Ethereum, Ripple, and Bitcoin Cash are starting to really take the lead here. It's really exciting to see the risk-taking side come back to crypto, the optimism and the innovation coming back into the space where many people just a month ago were saying that Bitcoin was dead and that cryptocurrencies weren't going to come back for two years. It's the same reason why back in February when we were at the peak of the crisis, when we were at 6,000, I told people to remain calm, not worry, and stay focused on the longevity of where this revolution is going to take us. Again, guys, we are just at the beginning of this, in my opinion. Again, you got to assess it for yourself if you're making your own investments. But guys, for me, I know where my money is, and I'm a believer in this market in the long term. I think we're just getting started, and that 2018 is going to be just as optimistic as 2017 was. So now that we've gone across the board, we see the optimisms here. Let's go ahead and talk about oh i mean guys i'm, I'm not even a, i'm joking here but at the same time look at the chad trend right there it can't be stopped we're back in action no, i'm just kidding <laughs> anyways let's spend some time to talk about bitcoin here because we obviously blew right through the resistance that i was thinking bitcoin would struggle to get past and that was the level at nine thousand. now we could fade after today the price could come back down you know who knows we're, we're in the middle part of the day around 12 o'clock but I want to spend some time to talk about where I see it going next. You know, what's the next key resistance point? Because as much as we're exuberant in this market, we're excited about the hopeful upside of Bitcoin, we have to keep in mind that there might be some resistance points. I know, I'm doubting the Chad trend. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what that point of resistance might be. Well, to me, as someone who's looking at more of the simple indicators, again, when you're looking at the bigger plays on Bitcoin, this is tended to be what you want to look for, is price levels as well as indicators. So meaning the big even numbers as well as things like the moving averages. And ironically enough, as we're moving here to the upside, it appears that the 200-day moving average is getting very close at its current rate of rising towards the big even of 10,000. And this is a level that many people have been asking as to whether or not we're going to be able to cross. And I really haven't shared my opinion on it. Guys, look, I will say that possibly in the short term, we might see resistance on this. And in fact, maybe what we'll see is resistance at 10,000, a support on 9,000 and a retest back to that level getting over that range as I was predicting we would once we got to 9,000 and we would pull back to 8,000 and retest the level. Maybe that's where we see the resistance. But I gotta tell you guys, the momentum in this market is serious. To give you guys some good fundamental backgrounds in all seriousness outside of the Chad trend, I, I wanna spend some time to talk about the fact that not only we're seeing some serious volume come in, we're seeing that on the hourly as we take a look at Bitcoin here. We can see the big volume buys. Again, what's pushing the price higher when the institutions are coming in and locking huge orders on the order book to buy Bitcoin. They're pushing the price higher. But along with that as well, what we don't see is what's happening on the OTC markets, the over-the-counter markets. This is where a lot of whales and larger players who are buying large sums of Bitcoin and don't want to pump up the price go to do their purchases as well as their sell-offs as well. There has to be matching orders. But I can tell you guys, when I was in Chiang Mai, I heard from many people who work in the OTC market that there's a lot of exciting stuff coming to the space, a lot of people getting interested in Bitcoin. Not any specific details, but just the fact that there's a lot of excitement coming into the space. There's a lot of institutions that over the past few months were excited about the opportunity that Bitcoin depleted from 20,000 down to a range around six to 8,000, where they had an opportunity to possibly get in at a lower price and not miss out on the grand opportunity of the ultimate rise of cryptocurrencies. So again, keep in mind, guys, that this honestly, in my opinion, is just the beginning. Whether or not we see some short-term resistance at 10K, which I wouldn't be surprised if we see, I think we've got much, much more room to go, and that this is very similar to the run-up we saw back here in April, May, and June. If we take a look back, I'll keep it short here, and then we'll, we'll get back into the uh, important stuff. But once we had the decline back through March and April, once we got down to a baseline of support around three, uh, 1,000, we were able to see a 3x fold increase in Bitcoin from 1,000 to 3,000. It was an extraordinary period, and that's actually where we started operating the Data Dash channel. But again, in summary, I think what we could be seeing is a repeat of that. History tends to repeat itself to some degree. I don't know if we'll see a 3x fold increase, but that would definitely get us back up to this upper range around $18,000 if it were to be the case. Either way, so long as a Bitcoin ETF comes uh, at least into the news, or talks of Bitcoin ETF comes in the news, we could very well see ourselves by the end of 2018 back or uh, back in that range, at least up to around 18 to 20,000. I think if you hear about an ETF, you're getting to 40 or 50,000 easily. So 
Now that we've gone through that, guys, I've rambled on about Bitcoin, the king, and the Chad trend. Let's go ahead and spend some time to talk about other market players. Ethereum did exactly what I needed it to do over the past few days, find support on that key level of support historically and continue moving higher, and that's exactly what it's doing. So, congrats to Ethereum on that so far. I think this has still got some room to go so long as the altcoin cycle is in full effect. Ethereum has some dominance to regain back in the market compared to Bitcoin and other players. So, nonetheless, uh, you know, I think this is good. Ethereum right now might have some more room to run. What am I looking for in regards to uh, potential resistance? Probably nothing until back up to 9 million Satoshis. That's where we found support last time, and sometimes previous support can become new resistance. So we'll have to see that. Let's give it some time. And uh, nonetheless, congrats to the bulls on Ethereum. Ripple as well. As much as I trash on Ripple, you guys know I do it all the time. Congrats to Ripple. It's had a nice correction so far in regards to the run-up that it's had. And if it can hold well as it has over the past few days, if this holds around this level, we might continue to see some more upside. Again, you need some of those big buy candles coming in. You need some serious volume. And so far, much like the other market players, we really haven't seen that yet. We have seen some bigger buy candles come out over the past few weeks, nonetheless, but we haven't seen what we saw back in December. Nonetheless, hopefully, uh, Ripple, just like every other cryptocurrency, will see some more upside. But nonetheless, uh, okay, I keep on saying nonetheless. In this case, uh, I'm still not holding any Ripple. That's the main point I want to drill across, but you guys know it's, it's more for fundamental reasons for me. All right, let's go ahead here and take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash finally having a slow day over the past week of absolutely optimistic price action. There was no downside. Serious volume coming in. Got to be fair, as much as I think the news was overhyped, got to give congrats to the Bitcoin Cash holders because I was not going to touch this until it reached 5 million Satoshis, so I was wrong on that. Always gotta admit my flaws when they're obviously clear, guys. And in this case, I think Bitcoin Cash probably needs a cooldown. We can see this. This obviously doesn't look like a pretty candle on the daily, but nonetheless, uh, I definitely would say, uh, you know, if I had Bitcoin Cash here, I would personally be locking in some profits, waiting for a nice stable level of correction or support, and then possibly seeing a re-entry if it builds enough stable support and price strength confirmation. So going across the board here, let's go ahead and take a look at Litecoin. Litecoin still seeing resistance at the 50-day, guys. I hate to play the bearish case on this. As much as it's, as it's improving on its USD value, again, waiting for that 200-day moving average. That'll be a healthy way for Litecoin to build some support. And as it continues to increase higher, it might give it a good short amount of room to hopefully come back up and retest the 50-day and break through and possibly gain dominance comparative to Bitcoin. Who knows? In this case, I think it's going to come back down at least to the 200-day. That's what I'm waiting for. So let's go ahead here, take a look at a few more market players. ADA, uh, really kind of holding up in the air, kind of like what we saw with Ripple and a few other players. Still waiting for that correction in this, guys, as much as I think this has still got a ways to go in the altcoin cycle. But again, it's an assessment of whether or not, if you really like the project, whether or not you want to take the risk of waiting uh, for this to correct. It might not. Again, guys, this market is in an absolutely exuberant period. So again, I think in the grander scheme of things, ADA is cheap right now. Cardano is a fundamentally good project long term. Like Charles, we, we did the interview a while back, and I still keep up with the project as much as I can. And interestingly enough, we found support above this previous resistance. Interesting stuff. So, little key reminder there, might be the new level of support so long as we hold it. But going on here, I want to take a look at a few more players in the market. Take a look here at Icon. Icon coming back up, looking like it might be forming the cupping price action here. We'll have to see if we can get a close. It looks like we got some rejection midday uh, with the wicks being very thin right now. And the can or sorry, the candle being thin uh, comparative to the wicks. We'll have to see here, see if it can close up above this level of previous resistance. I want to take a look at a few more market leaders here. We're going to take a look at NEO and EOS as well. And then some specific players in the market. Again, right now, NEO is still testing to see if it can get past that level of resistance at 900,000 Satoshis. If we get above there, guys, this might be a continued rally. But again, I'm fearing that this might be, again, another boost up like we saw in the previous, uh, before the previous run up in December. I'll go ahead and bring that up on Bitrix to drill on my point. Again, we had a previous run up uh, before we really got the serious cycle. But in this case, you know, again, we might be emulating uh, more of the uptrend we saw back in April and May. So it could be really good for Neo in that, in that case. Uh, so last but not least, in regards to the market leaders, let's go ahead and take a lead EOS. Guys, I gotta say, and some people were saying I was denying EOS, and no case was I denying EOS, but I gotta say, uh, I've been uh, definitely kind of neglecting EOS over the past few weeks. And 
time and time again, EOS has continued to triumph in this market. I mean, everything's generally doing good, but EOS has really been riding up on the anticipations of what Dan Lammer and the team are doing. So props to EOS on that and holders of EOS. Congratulations. I mean, this is just absolutely phenomenal stuff. EOS up 16% today. And with Bitcoin comparatively, I think that was up to 20 or 25%. So really good stuff, guys. Congratulations. So I want to go ahead and look at some of our market watch list items. There's three different players I'm going to talk about today. Some people have been asking me about my LISC trade. Or LISC. I'm going to sound like I said LISP. Uh, many people have been asking me about my LISC trade here. And for LISC at the moment... I just want to let you guys know that I have exited my trade on, and I apologize if I didn't mention it in my previous videos, but the reason I did that uh, was because for the past week, I was up on the trade. I wasn't losing on my trade. I, I bought in around, I think, 120,000 Satoshi, somewhere in that range, and it was holding about that price, as we can obviously see, but there was just a lot of random spikes where it was going up to around 135 to 140,000 Satoshis, and it wasn't really moving anywhere. It kept on getting rejection at the 200-day, so because of that, I locked it out for a small profit, but I'm looking to re-enter once we break through, have a good solid volume candle breaking through to the upside through that 200-day moving average. If we can get that, I'll do another trade on LISC again because historically, it has very fast price momentum after it does that. So that's what I'm looking out for on LISC. Taking a look at two more players here. Q-Link, again, continuing to do exactly what I was hoping it would do, guys. We're going through, hopefully, for the ICO reversal here, hopefully breaking past that resistance level around 28 to 2,900 Satoshis. And after that, that's where I think we're going to see the serious price action. That's why it's a big trade of mine right now. I'm still optimistic on it, guys. Still hodling the trade. And hopefully, we'll get some volume that'll push it up higher and really uh, take it to higher levels here. I think, again, with the altcoin cycle coming in, this is just the beginning for Q-Link getting listed on Binance. And last but not least, again... Someone was asking me about Nulls as well. Nulls, again, still holding well here on the support level around 25,000 Satoshis in the weekly. The image is becoming clear. But again, really want to point the focus on Q-Link, guys. Q-Link is holding the trend much like what we saw with Ontology. Again, I'm looking at the weekly here as well as Wanchain, the reversal pattern. This is very common as we step into the bull run with all these new listings, all these new exciting players that have gotten onto Binance when the investor is having an opportunity to invest in them at nice cheap levels. So... That's the general trend of the market, guys. That was a mouthful. Let's go ahead and dive into the headlines. So first and foremost, I want to spend some time to talk about the Indian High Court to hear a case in regards to the central bank's recent regulations and ban on banks dealing with cryptocurrencies. This is very important because this is the first real attestment towards uh, the central bank of India after its recent regulations. So. As we go into the details here, I don't want to get too detailed here. However, the High Court of Delhi has opened up the decision to hear out a case contesting against the Central Bank of India. Uh, this is coming from a company, it was uh, after a petition was filed, that got thousands of signatures uh, with Kali Digital Ecosystems seeking an appropriate writ, order, or direction uh, quasi uh, Quashing the circular. Okay, basically what that means, uh, you guys know I don't use fancy terminology. I like to break things down. Basically means they're they're attesting towards the system. They're questioning the uh, the uh, authority the authority uh, authoritative stance of the central bank of India, and they're saying that the ban is arbitrary and unconstitutional. Now, as we go across the board here, really what they're testing is the fact that this company, Kali Digital Ecosystems, a tech company based in India, was objectively trying to launch an exchange this coming August, I think known as CoinRequo, that's what it is right there. Uh, they were planning to launch it in August, and because of that, and the new, uh, because of the fact that the Indian Central Bank has established these new regulations, they can't function operation uh, their operations as an exchange in a sound manner because they can't connect to banks. So because of that, it's a very big stance to see uh, not only a, a large petition that was uh, like the one that was filed last week, but along with that corporate enterprise standing up in India, the companies that are trying to innovate and become a part of this industry standing up to the wits of the central bank in India. So I think that's a very good thing to see. And I really like this quote. The move by the RBI has put the burgeoning cryptocurrency sector in jeopardy and may affect the basic rights of such entities to carry on any trade. So that's really the case here. It's a very clear statement that they're standing up to the central bank of india that even though cryptocurrencies are officially banned countrywide by the government that central banks have banned banks from doing business in crypto and because of that people will not be easily able to onboard into this industry so rather than uh kind of a government enforcing this they're realizing the fact that this was a central bank abusing its authority over the financial sector uh, and really kind of effectively setting in a ban without government policy so 
again, that's the real effort. It'd be kind of like the Federal Reserve saying that banks can't do business with cryptocurrency exchanges. They're not really a full governing body, but they do help in managing monetary policy. So it's kind of a thin line here. So I'd like to hear what you guys think down below in regards to this case and see if you guys think this is going to have any effect on it. But we have another player in the same regard in regards to central banks. Iran stating that the, um, they're barring banks from bit the Bitcoin market and cryptocurrencies. Look, as we go through the details here, guys, it gets pretty ironic because it's the same exact case that we hear across the board in regards to governments and cryptocurrencies. So Iran's central bank, the CBI, the Central Bank of Iran, has stated in a quotation that they're banning dealing in cryptocurrencies uh, such as Bitcoin because of the worries of anti -mon uh Actually, no, I'll just go ahead and look at the quote here. We already know the same kind of arguments on money laundering, but this is basically what they stated. Vir oh, oh, it misspelled it here. Virtual currencies have the option to be used for money laundering, supporting terrorism, and exchange of sums between wrongdoers. But I gotta say, you know, a lot of governments have been saying this, but it just seems kind of ironic. I don't know in Iran. For some reason, I feel like there's been a means of transaction, in a, especially in a, you know, a society like Iran, which doesn't have digital money, where, you know, people have been able to make an exchange between peer-to-peer uh, -peer without a central authority and without, you know, keeping numbers on the books and, you know, kind of laundering money to terrorists and people who should probably be doing business uh, in a more professional and more traced manner. I, I just can't think of any technology that's been out there for thousands of years that's been uh, funneling terrorism in places like Iran. I, I just don't know. You know, if you guys can think about something, you know, leave it down in the comments down below. But, and you know, I, I think they're right on the money here. It's these evil cryptocurrencies, guys. It's these evil digital currencies without a central authority uh, that are on an immutable public ledger. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's what terrorists are using, you know. We need to ban these guys. I think both Iran and India have got the right right kind of lead here. And I got to tell you guys, you guys getting caught up in this chat trend. You're sick people. You're sick people because you don't realize you're supporting money laundering. Because that's what everyday people do. And it doesn't ever happen in the real world. All right, well, I could ramble on for hours. That's it for the daily update, guys. Again, if you guys are uh, excited about any of the events that are coming up, please look down in the description down below and check out the details and hopefully purchase tickets to come see me. Love to see you guys. Let me know what you guys think about current markets and cryptocurrencies as well as the headlines we dive into in regards to India and Iran. But until the next video, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the continuous love and support, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.